This is about our summary about the ST4X and the service design course for executives and uh, what, what, what we learned basically. And just a minor comment uh, that there are some people who don't knew us, we are part of this uh, service design uh, for executive course core team who developed the course and uh, tried to figure out how to teach it. When we started with this, this was a long time ago, two, two and a half years, two years ago, um, and uh, the problem was that uh, uh, we, we created this idea of, uh, to, to fill a gap. Uh, service design uh, doesn't work if management doesn't believe it. That's, uh, I've been doing this for 10 year-ish. We've been involved in different projects with Kiliki over the years, and it's always the same picture that uh, if, if top level doesn't or mid management doesn't get it, then, then the operational level, no matter what they do, they can't get it to, to land. And uh, that is also the experience of the Service Design Network. We've been, I was behind the Service Design Award, and we started six years ago, and there is the same thing all the projects that we get, you can see the failure rates. And during the discussions in the juries, we saw that 20% you know, 20, 20 success rates is what we're talking about in real life. That you have initiatives and then they die. So we partnered up with a whole bunch of people and, and skills, Damien and uh, Ivers, who had to leave yesterday in Tallinn University, and, and uh, humble brand manual to, to really find the necessary skills and put together a, a course that would allow us to really explore how to teach a whole course. There's a lot of material on service design. There's a whole bunch of books. They're all methodological books about use this process here, use this process there, use this process there. Uh, Stanford D does some teaching, Köln uh, KISS does some teaching, but there is no real system for, okay, how do you go from A to Z? And obviously we also found, it, found some money to do this as a pilot course because where else, how can you create it if nobody is sort of investing in it. So like I said, I mean, we started over two years ago actually and, and the goal was to do then a course that starts in 2020, last year, sometime in summer I think it was the goal and it would have been the location here, there and everywhere. And uh, the structure was the, the same that we have been following, is the six modules, one week each, one module a month, give or take, following this double diamond method of divergent and convergent thinking, which we expanded in the course of the design of the course. The, the traditional service design is always this discover, define, develop, deliver, but we had this added this strategizing from as, as Damien put it, to, to really take in the whole corporate view before you even start looking at what are the problems and going on beyond the deliverer, what is the business and how to facilitate this. And yeah, the background is simple. We started here with a whole bunch of people in reality and end up up in a sort of an online format where we did everything that we've been doing for six months because we had to put the course together in a uh, digital format, and I think I was the one writing that we needed a drink in the middle. <coughs> it, was, uh, it was an intense period of very many discussions which finally ended up in this one really, really long day where, where all the bits and pieces sort of got designed together. And then, you know, COVID came and you're online with everything, thank you, and so on. So. And that, in that sense, that, that we had the course plans and then going online was a real challenge because we had really no experience in, in how do you do full online courses. There is, yeah, there are online courses in universities all across the world before COVID, but the, 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 the methods and methodologies and stuff were all a little bit here and a little bit there. Nobody had the experience of doing full onlines everywhere. And uh, the, the educational system crash, you see them experimenting, and everybody was experimenting. So we had sort of a half year break in between of our development because we had, didn't know where to look exactly and asking Erasmus, can we postpone? Because their financing has conditions tied. But, but you know, when there's no other option, you, you, you work on it and you go through this fuzzy front end and you work your way towards, okay, how can we do this and how can we deliver it? And we experienced 
this, you know, in a, in a massive way of all this volatility, uncertainty, chaos and ambiguity that we're going along with trying to, okay, how do we actually structure a course? How do we do it internationally? How do we build it day by day? What's the course schedules? Where are all the bits and pieces? How does this fit? Who does what, where, and when? When do we prepare? And so on and so forth. Um, in an environment where everybody's workload had doubled because everything else we were doing on a daily basis was also online and we had to do that as well. And I think everybody had the same experience. So there's an incredible learning curve for everyone in terms of how to go about teaching and, and learning. And you know, there's not, no going back to this new or old normal, so there is, there is a lot that will come along with us in the future and I think it's a good thing. I think the fact that we were forced to learn uh, along with how to teach and how to think about service design, also how to think about the th teaching about of service design and how to think about teaching and learning in general has been an incredible learning experience that's been a benefit to everyone, regardless of what you do and how you do it. So, I mean, one of the learnings, obviously, is, is that online actually works, but it really does work if everyone is online, and I think you have to agree, even today's uh, hybrid presentation, all that it immediately makes it complicated. We experience either one or the other, but it's halfway, then somebody feels disjointed. And uh, the other thing that obviously everybody's learned over the last 18 months, I think online is equals on time and real life equals 15 minutes, give or take. That's something that we can't get away from. And do we have to or don't we? But it's, it's an observation. We've all become digital ninjas over this uh, year. It's uh, like uh, Dr. Green Lowry said, I mean, digital skills are no-brainers nowadays. I mean, we all need them, never mind what we're doing. It's no longer a specific skill, it's a general skill. But, you know, you look at kids being able to uh, pretend they're studying on the other computer, pretending they're playing PlayStation, actually on the phone doing something third. I mean, that's multitasking in extreme digital skills. And, uh, but yeah, I mean, going over and under it, it's, it creates a lot of work and it creates twice the amount of work for everything that you want to do because you have to backtrack and think about how you register, how you document, how you do all these things in a completely different framework. So it's been a hell of a ride over the last 24 months and it's been a real challenge in the sense of getting it all together and trying to keep a, a sense of proportion and where are we, where are we going, how are we going to organize on a daily basis. And the fact that is, is this talking to my screen, that was really hard. I don't know how it is on the other side, I've been listening to lectures, it's the same thing. Sometimes it's really engaging and sometimes your eyes glass over and you say, oh, I, I'm sorry, I fall asleep, what did he say? And then you can turn off the camera and you can pretend you're not there. So, that is sort of the general learnings of what we got out of SD4X, but the very specific learnings are yours. Yeah, but the good point is that actually we learned a lot from this process. Like we have learned uh, and listen, heard from your pitches that you also learned during uh, carrying out your projects. And that is, uh, even if you fail, then it's not a failure, but actually this is a learning. So, uh, this was actually our presumption that uh, we like to uh, involve people into the course from very uh, different industries and this presumption actually worked and the diversity is good. That it's good that people can actually share their knowledge and their learnings, their, they can interact across the industries and this really works. Diversity also in that sense that um, when you have an online course especially, you have to mix different kind of teaching methods and learning methods. This was also uh, very, very important. And also that uh, the internationality that we combined with uh, Dutch, Latvian, Estonians, I think this also um, referred that uh, this uh, learning experience actually increased. What uh, was a real challenge, actually, what we didn't realize at the first place, that uh, we maybe wanted too much from them. We wanted to teach them service design approach, service design methods, and we wanted 
at the same time that they apply the new knowledge into their organization. And what we got as a feedback, they said that actually this is a very complicated thing to do. So, what is a learning from this that if we do this kind of course again, we have to more concentrate on certain um, common case and that takes the participants through the course and maybe this also helps them to um, more concentrate on learnings and then applying the new knowledge to their, into their organization. And uh, also a little bit connected to that was that we actually talked about two different things. We wanted them to uh, actually uh, carry out an organizational change, some kind of high level view of organization, and at the same time also apply it on a certain service and change a certain service. This is also the thing that we got this feedback that in some times, in some points, it's a very complicated thing to do. So we definitely should kind of um, manage this kind of conflict better. But at the first place, we, we thought that, oh, we want to do it all. We want them to learn. We want them to apply it on their organizations. We want them to carry out the total organizational change. And this is actually what the service design is about. So we actually want it too much. We also learned that, um, and this is a point where this uh, coronavirus is actually good. I think that at the first place we didn't think that um, we are going to carry it to hybrid course. We think only that we are going to travel from one place to another, but um, we realized that uh, combining this online and on-site teaching and learning is maybe the best thing that um, could, be, could be done. So, if we do it, this kind of course again, we definitely uh, combine this online and on-site uh, training, but uh, definitely we have to start from face-to-face uh, uh, -face, uh, meetings at the beginning. Then maybe after a while again, and again this at the end. It was luck that we could meet at the end, finally. So, um, but we also learned that uh, we can't apply the same uh, timing, the same uh, time slots, same kind of uh, teaching methods as in uh, on-site trainings. When everything comes online, it has to be shortest time, time slots. When you are online, it has to be actually concentrated on interaction. And uh, then again, you have to have breaks, you have to have some kind of activity between different kind of uh, lectures or, or other workshops. So this is the way you keep the participants motivated. We also learned that uh, we have to probably a little bit uh, redesign how we uh, put the different topics into sequence. And we understand that we have to more start with a philosophy and then move towards more action. Because there are several issues, several foundations, several fundamental principles that actually are needed to be known before you start an organizational change. Like all these kind of sustainability issues, social impact issues, um, responsibility issues, all these kind of things are uh, kind of needed in the organization in order to apply a service design approach. And this was the issue we didn't um, actually tackle at the, at the beginning, but I think that now we, we have um, experienced it, we would do uh, definitely some things different. Yeah, we uh, marketed it as an executive level course, but we got this feedback that uh, actually talked so, uh, too much about operational level issues. And that is about maybe a little bit connected to the issue that the service design approach and thinking is uh, very much about learning by doing. We also started with the design sprint. We wanted that you actually get your hands dirty at the very beginning. and. Uh, and the feedback we got that this was very great, but uh, at the same time, we should have more brought in different kinds of strategic perspective, which would be more helpful to you to um, 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 apply uh, organizational, uh, apply design thinking and apply service design in your organization. Another important issue was, and what we 
uh, continuously uh, received uh, from you as a feedback that uh, actually we have to link different topics much more. We have to say that we are here at the moment for that kind of purpose. And we are moving towards another topic because of what? And we were there and we did such kind of things due to certain reasons. This is a typical uh, information asymmetry issue that we know actually where we wanted to get to but you were not aware of it. So you were kind of uh, struggling how are, are we on a track or what kind of topics were our heads, but uh, we knew, but you didn't. So uh, always reminding you from that we are here and where we are going is definitely an issue. And uh, directly from your feedback that you actually need more this type of peer-to-peer -peer mentoring. You need a body in your course that you can actually talk to. And uh, as largely the participants uh, in, the, in uh, the course were that one people from uh, one organization, you definitely need someone to talk to. So, yeah, I don't know how we do it, but definitely we need some kind of uh, peer to peer mentoring system built into the course. And uh, you also brought out that. Uh, you want to hear more about uh, practical examples how service design is applied in different organizations. We had those cases, but I think that more the better, probably. So uh, more kind of inspirations and uh, more kind of examples how different organizations actually do it. So definitely would be a beneficial issue. And this is a way actually if you didn't realize before, then this was the thing what actually happened, at least according to our point of view. part of a very large scale human experiment. Thank you for that. And uh, this is a good place to continue from, at least for us. Thank you. <laughs>